Welcome to Solutions with Courtney Anderson. I am your host, Courtney Anderson. Today's show is part of our Failure Flashback series. That was supposed to be a sound effect. Uh, The Failure Flashback series is where I use myself as the uh, basis for a discussion, looking backwards in my own uh, personal experience. And I'm looking backwards. That's why it's a flashback. And I am recalling, to the best of my ability, a failure that I have experienced. And the entire purpose is to try to see if any of it's instructive. As I I note in the show notes, uh, for this series, you know, there's so much out there in in popular culture and uh, many different disciplines, right, about success. How to be successful. This is how I was successful. Here's how I succeeded, you know. Um, And that is helpful, I do think. You know, I myself, when I want to learn something or I'm curious, um, I go and I want to look and see, well, okay, look, what are what information can I glean from people who have accomplished the outcome I'd like? So that makes total sense. That's the idea, right? I find somebody who's done the thing that I'm interested in doing or trying to do, and then I try to work backwards from there and figure out, okay, what, what, what do they have to share with me that could be helpful? So the other thing in life that's instructive at times is to realize that you know my journey is not the only one fraught with peril other people stumble um fall the key is how do you how do you can how do you go forward how do you get back up and so there's so much um about resilience and grit and so that's what this series is about it's about not just talking about the areas that i feel pretty confident um and that I have experienced some positive outcomes, but also talking about some negative outcomes, which we're calling a negative outcome failure, and trying to see if there's anything in this path and in, in this flashback that will be of assistance to other people. And certainly, the it, it, these shows are always tough <laughs> for me. Uh, you know, we don't often like to revisit uh, things where we had negative outcomes, just because. Well, you know, we had a negative outcome, and that's not really, you know, super awesome. It's kind of the opposite of awesome. And often, we don't want to spend a lot of time or any time on these things. Yet, how do we learn if we're not willing to own all of the outcomes uh, in our lives and the, the consequences thereof? So here we are, and this specific episode in our Failure Flashback series is I Am Failing. A class and so this is of course focused on someone who's a student um, mostly focused on someone who's a student in a, a university or, or a college although I'm sure probably as we go through the, the failure flashback there might be some opportunity for it to be applied for you know maybe somebody in secondary school um, so here we go one of the things that I love is education and I do so many uh, programs and I'm such an advocate, right? You know, always everything that we do in all my programs, everything that that we produce is all about, you know, surpassing our goal. So that's great. And then, of course, I think education is just, you know, one of the the most powerful gifts that we have as humans. You know, the the ability to absorb so much information and the ability, of course, to educate and share with other people. I love education. Um, I love it so much that you know, I I feel like I. I take breaks between different academic programs, but I don't know if I could say today that I've finished with school because there's always something else and I'll think, eh, maybe I should get a license in that or a certification, you know, or, or I'll look in an area and think, eh, I have a little bit extra time. I could knock out another degree in a couple of years. Why not? So on one hand, many people would argue that that's sort of, you know, a good outcome. Um, if you make, you know, sort of the assumption that, that education is positive, I I, you know, finished middle school or junior high school. I finished secondary school, high school. Um, I went to uh, university and had my bachelor's degree completed. Then I completed a law school degree in the U.S. That's um, after your undergrad degree, and it's an additional um, 86 credit hours. So somewhere around, you know, three-plus years of additional grad study and doctorate. In, in the U.S., a doctor of jurisprudence, and then I went and I earned an MBA, a master's degree in business administration, and then uh, very uh, recently I finally finished another master's degree, a master's degree, master's of science, um, 
and uh, and it was in liberal studies, and then I created my own curriculum around um, criminal justice, basically focusing on international white collar crime um, and industrial organizational psychology, which is a huge interest of mine, um, and then human resource management, which is another one of the issues that I you know teach and love, and and so part some people would say, well, okay, you you really love school, you know to four college degrees may be a bit much um and you you know assuming that there's some benefit to that which i would argue there is not just economically professionally opportunity for um different work uh just intellectually i like learning things that's the truth i really do the fact that i can learn something and then and by the way while i'm learning it also rack up some other credential that i can then deploy professionally um i feel like is a win-win uh my you know so much of everything that, that my programs are all about surpassing your goals of course is also thinking strategically so why not if you're interested and you're going to learn it anyway if you why not learn it within some sort of credential or program if you can and you want to and then you can use it um, not just use the knowledge but you can also use the fact that you have verification of the level of um, mastery that you have completed so some people would say hey you love education so clearly i don't know why you're talking about failing a class I do love the outcome, and I, I've said many times, I, and, and you know, certainly that's my journey as a student. And then, of course, I'm an educator, right? So I, I've been uh, teaching uh, college classes for a really, at this point, uh, quite a while, since um, 1990, 1996, I think, is when I started my first um, post-secondary teaching job. And then in 1997, I taught my my first university, uh, and I've just you know been doing that all along too. So I have a whole different perspective as an educator. But let's talk about in this failure of flashback my experience as a student. Yes, the end outcome and my favorite thing is the the goal. Again, that fits in with everything in all of our programs, and of course, sort of my macro view on life. I love graduations. In fact, I, <laughs> I, I've i gone to graduations for programs where it was very stressful. Um, and I can still say that was my favorite day. I just love graduation because, uh, you know, I love the, the show of it all. And I love the excitement and I love all the people. And, you know, there's music and I even like the, you know, the songs, you know, pomp and circumstance. It's great. And so I love graduations. They're always so much fun. And there's emotion and excitement and happiness and people dress up. And, you know, it's it's a culmination of a goal. So I love things like that, all the outcomes. I'm, I, in, in, a, in a positive aspect, I think one of the things that helps me keep moving forward in terms of these, um, these issues as a student is I always focus on the outcome. So, you know, if I start something in my mind, once I start it, and I make a commitment, I'm, I'm committed. Now, how am I going to get necessarily from A, you know, to Z? I'm not really sure. But I do know I will get to Z because I the graduation is like the best part, right? So I'm going to get there. The reality is being a student, you know, up through primary school and secondary school to you know, as a, as a child and then a teen, and then um, being a, a student in different uh, colleges and, and, and graduate programs, um, you know, from the age of 17 through in my 40s, there's been a, a progression. So I can say that I've learned a lot about the failures and I'm going to try to share some of those tips, but it's never, I think, going to be an issue where it's easy for me to, uh, again, accomplish and surpass the goal. I'm, I, I never doubt that I will reach the goal because that's sort of my personality and I've made the commitment. And in my mind, if you make the commitment, you will do it. How I do it is always where it's a little murky. So... Looking back at my failure flashback time machine, I'm going back and going back and going back in time. Oh my goodness, I'm 17. Whoa, just the other day. Uh, and so I went off for my first um, uh, university program. It's so exciting. Here I am. I finished and graduated from high school and I'm in college. Yay, me. 
What's going on? I'm failing a class. What? Now, I can share a couple of things. Um, one of the things that is helpful when we look at our failure flashback, of course, we have a couple of questions. We always ask, how did it happen? How did I respond? What solutions did I deploy? And how do I remain vigilant today? So the first thing is, how did it happen? So I've, I've gone back in my time machine and I'm somewhere in my teen. So I'm, let's say I'm 17 or 18 or 19. And so when I was 17 and 18, I was at uh, one university program where I was full-time residential living on the campus and in a student housing uh, facility. And actually that that time from memory went, went pretty well in terms of not being in a situation with failing classes, largely because I was in a um, an area that didn't have sort of like a large city nearby, um, and there wasn't a lot socially to do. And I I was on campus. I lived on campus. I just worked, um, meaning I went to class, and there wasn't much else to do, or at least there wasn't there weren't things to do that I I would have enjoyed. Um, it was a very beautiful part of the country, the United States, but it you know for somebody who likes to do a lot of rural activities or outdoor activities, it would have been great. It just those really weren't my favorite activities. So I went into class and then I spent time on, you know, other hobbies and, and then I would leave town on weekends and go visit uh, friends in other cities. So I really wasn't distracted during the week. I went to class. Then I transferred and went to a different university in a different area that was a totally different setting. So it wasn't out somewhere away from a big city. It was in a huge big city. And there was tons to do of things that I was interested in. Right, so music and 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 opportunities to just have fun, and there's so many people, and um, so how does it happen that I'm failing a class? I have a t- couple of issues that I, in hindsight, can see result in this, but I'm in the situation where I'm looking at the syllabus, which is sort of the outline of what you have to do and when you have to do it. And I'm pulling out my calculator and I'm looking at my current grades because I always keep track of my grades, right? Because I just love outcomes, right? So I love graduation and I also love ending classes. I'm always focused on the end. And so there comes a point where I'm sitting and I'm looking at the syllabus and I'm looking at how many points are available, right? And I'm looking at the grading scale, you know, often in the U.S., A, B, C, D, F. And I'm looking at my number of points and I'm looking at the, the number of points remaining in the class and I'm realizing the only way I'm going to earn what I consider to be a reasonable grade, um, you know, and is to earn every point remaining in the class, right? So I have made choices by either not turning my assignments in or turning in things that are late or partially completed. And now I'm looking at the points that are remaining and I'm thinking, oh, okay, well, there are 50 out of 100% is, is remaining in the semester. And so if I get all 50 points and then I already have, you know, um, you know, 25 points, then I'll get to a, a 75 and that'll be a C. Um, it's not great, uh, but I'll pass. Okay. By the time you get to the, the reality when you're sitting there and you're looking and you're thinking, oh my gosh, well, you know, it's possible mathematically because look at all of the points that are remaining. If I get all of those, then then yes, totally, I can get to a point where I can, quote, pass. Once you're at that point, you're in trouble. You're in deep trouble. You're, you're in the water and the current is raging and you're, like, probably going to drown. You You should have done what you're doing now a long time ago. The only reason that I was failing the class is because if you went back even more of a flashback, you'll see that I did a couple of things. One, I, I love outcomes. And I'm, you know, again, like I, I'm just owning this. Like I, I've been around me long enough at this point in life. You know, don't lie. Don't hide it. Don't try to cover it up. This is me. I love outcomes. I love them so much that I'll look at the outcome and I'll think, um, oh, okay. I'll think, oh, well, I need, you know, um, you know, whatever number of credit hours I need, then uh, I, I, and I want to get this done as quickly as I can, right? So I would look and say, okay, if I need, you know, X number of credit hours, what's the maximum credit hours I can take a semester? Um, and then I would say, um, okay, I'll take more than that. Because the faster I, you know, if I take more classes, right, instead of taking, you know, four classes a semester, I'll take six or seven. And then I'll move faster and then I'll be done with the program and get to graduation, which of course was my goal. My, I'm so focused on that end outcome that I'm tr- and, I, and I'm trying to get there as quickly as I can. That's, that's sort of been a, a, a habit. And so when I'm failing, 
and I'm looking at the numbers and the numbers are bad. And I'm trying to convince myself that, oh, well, you know, if you get 100% of everything that's left in the class, uh, you know, you can make it happen. Okay, is it possible? Yes. Anything is possible. It's possible that I could go to another solar system later today. It's possible. It's possible that I could turn into a cricket in the next 20 minutes. It's totally possible. Is it probable? No. I take on too much. Too much. I take on too many classes in one semester. I take on, you know, too many, um, too, there's only 24 hours in a day. And even if, especially when I was younger, so this is back, you know, we talked about not when I was 17, 18, but when I was 18, 19, uh, 20, that was finishing my first degree and then entering my second degree at 20, 21, 22. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm better now and that I know my habits and I can, and try to plan but at the time I still have the same tendency though my tendency is I want to get to the end result and I want it to be awesome right so I want to get to graduation I want to get as quickly as I can so in my mind if I look at the 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 course you know degree program um and I did this this is you know I did this right so before I even started college I looked at you know the program I already had credits for college from high school uh, they have programs in many different parts of the world in the U.S. you could take some tests they have advanced placement tests things of that nature so in high school you take classes and you take tests the tests equate depending on what you score on college credit I had all of that I entered college already you know a year into the program because I had so many credits from my high school advanced placement tests um, and then I planned out right because I'm busy I need to get to the goal the goal graduation how do I get there faster how do you get there faster I don't take three or four classes a semester no right if the minimum that I was supposed to take full-time is four credits four classes a semester four cre- four classes some usually like 12 12 credits if they reach you know three credit hours I want to go take um, six credits or seven cl- classes and I'll go and I would go ask I did this I would go petition you have to fill out paperwork right so they'll tell you the minimum is like four classes and then I would think well that's too slow because it'll take me too long so I would think oh I, I want to do six and let's say the rule was you could take six classes without having to ask for permission so I would do that but then I I I'd think well if I added a seventh class right now um, and I did that you know twice you know, this semester, or next semester, then I'll have, you know, 14 classes. I'm going to be, I'm going to be moving very quickly. And you have to ask for permission. Let's say I'm doing this, you know, just the numbers aren't correct, but just sort of hypothetically. So let's say, you know, it's, you know, four classes was the minimum you needed to be full time. I, you know, certainly had that. But then I thought, well, if I went in, then, you know, I could take six classes without asking for permission. I could just sign up for that. But then I would think, well, I need seven or eight classes because I need to move much quicker and I can do four classes easy, no problem. And so I would do that, right? So I'd, I'd go get the max classes and then I'd ask for permission to get more classes and I'd sign up for all these classes. And um, the reality is there are so many hours in a day. Now I can take a lot of classes. I mean, the real, part of this is what led to the failure, right? Question one, how did it happen? Um, school had been very easy for me. So, you know, primary school and middle school and high school had been, and I'm talking only academically. I'm not talking about socially. Uh, I'm not misrepresenting myself or anyone that ever went to a school with me um, and and doesn't remember anything particularly interesting or positive. I was not socially successful. Uh, I was not in any way, you know, the things that you really care about as a young person and an adolescent. I was not that. I was not cool. I was not popular. I was nothing, right? Um, in terms of that currency, I did understand the academic part because that is my area, right? I know that. And part of it is it just came so easy. Everything was easy. I didn't really, I didn't study really. You know, I could look at something a few minutes before a test, walk in there, get the top grade. Okay. That taught me and reinforced a very negative behavior, which was that it would always be easy and so it was so easy for so long and I would listen to other people you know in school and they'd say oh it's so hard and I I didn't understand I, I would I would think well I was in that same class I you know I I put an hour in into the whole thing and got the you know top grade I don't understand what they're saying was you know what was the problem and like I said in 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 secondary school and in, in high schools in several different states because I moved around a lot of shared in other programs um my father had a job and, and so that we moved constantly. He was in the United States uh, Army. Um, 
And so I had taken all these classes extra that I didn't, you know, need to graduate high school, but I wanted to get these extra classes so I could get these tests, these advanced placement tests, and then I'd get all these credits so that I could go, you know, I knew finishing high school, I'd already be ahead of the game, right? I like to be ahead of the game. So um, because I'm, tr- because I think big picture in my mind, I'm just trying to get to the goal. And I have all this, you know, anxiety and I have all these, you know, life experiences that I, 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 I don't feel guaranteed today or tomorrow and I just want to get there. So by the time I got to college, I was used to a lifetime, right? I've had, you know, all this time from, you know, kindergarten, I'm all the way up through, you know, finishing high school. It was, it was so easy. You know, maybe there was a class or two that I thought was a little bit challenging. Um, you know, trigonometry or something might have been a little bit, you know, I had to work a little bit harder than I normally do, which is usually I did almost nothing. You know, because reading came really easy to me, um, and that's the basis for almost everything you do, right? All the social sciences and your history and your government and your civics and, um, you know, any electives I took, you know, were easy. And um, the math got a little bit, a little bit more difficult for me because just because it's slower, you know, than just sort of my reading skills or my fallback. And so by the time I got to college, I had all these habits that were horrible that were built in. I was used to signing up for the most amount of classes, the most amount of advanced placement, all this kind of, you know, and I was in these advanced uh, programs for um, what they call talented or gifted students where I'd go for these enrichment programs and have all these extra challenges and it still wasn't challenging. I mean, it was not, you know, it was sometimes, my main problem was I was bored a lot, right? Because it was too easy. So by the time I got to college, I had the same kind of mindset. Well, I'll just, I'll just load up on these classes because it'll be somewhat similar. And the problem was, it actually kind of was, um, you know, the easier it was, the more that I could kind of wait till last minute and do an all-nighter, right? So the last minute is, oh, the test is tomorrow. Wait a minute. I haven't been to class in a month. Now I got to read all the work I haven't read in a month and I have to memorize all of this stuff that I don't know. And then I have to be ready, you know, in like 12 hours. And I would do it. This is horribly unhealthy. You know, I, I'm, I forget it. I'm not going to sleep. I'm just going to sit here and I'm going to learn everything I should have learned, you know, in six weeks, but I'm going to learn it now. And then I would, I would do that, I wouldn't sleep, and then I'd go into the class, and I'd take the test, and yay, I passed, right? So, you know, normally, of course, I would want to get the top grade, the A's, because in my mind, you know, why not? But then as time went on, I realized, eh, what's the difference if I get a B? Eh, it's same, you know, it's not going to kill me. And then I thought sometimes, well, you know, I have a lot of classes, right? Because maybe most people are taking four classes. I'm taking, you know, eight classes. Um, I did this to myself. But then I think, well, it's not going to make any difference, right? Because if I get a C, I already have a lot of A's. It'll balance it out. So I'll just do that. Then I would get to a point and talk myself into, um, you know, you need you, you can go ahead and switch the class to pass fail. Because at some schools early in the semester for some classes, you could take the class initially for a grade and then change it to pass fail. And then I, I knew I could get by because to get to a pass is, of course, what I'm doing is just lowering the bar, right? And I'm thinking, all right, you know, I'll just wait till the last minute. I'm not going to aim for the A. I'll aim for, you know, the B. You know, in some cases, I'll be willing to accept the C because I already have a whole bunch of A's. It'll, it'll balance it out. And I'm already graduating right now. You know, what I, what I did because my system, right, like I'm trying to get it done so quickly and I don't want to be bored. By the time I entered, you know, by the time I entered my second year of college or sophomore year, um, I was already, I had so many credits, I was going to be graduating that next year, you know, so my second year was kind of my junior year, you know, and I knew I would be graduating. So by that point, I'm thinking, I'm so focused on all the programs I'm applying to, I'm so focused on all the, you know, am I going to go to med school? I thought for a while, I'd go to medical school, am I going to go to law school? You know, I was back and forth on that, I need to take all these entrance, entrance tests for, you know, medical school, the MCAT or law school, the LSAT, I'm very busy. And so, and I had really high grades and I had all these, you know, um, so I thought I can eat and eat, you know, I can absorb a C or so because I'm, I'm busy. And by that point, I was already focused on this undergrad thing is just about done, right? Like I'm just wrapping this up and I'm moving on to my next program. And so I was so focused on the next program. I started talking myself into, you know, I don't even need to put in all of the effort I normally would in my last minute uh, study cram session. I'll just take a C and keep moving because I'm very busy. And then I'd have a couple of instances where I remember don't ask me the class, but I do remember thinking, you know, oh, look, look at this. The catalog says, you know, the rules the school has, the catalog. It would say, oh, you know, I can change this to pass fail, and then I'll change it to pass fail, so then I'll just do, you know, bare minimum to get the pass, and that's fine because I'll take some of that time and use it to cram for my other, you know, seven classes. This system 
in terms of outcomes, did I get to graduation um, with my undergrad degree in three years, you know, at 20 years old? Yes, I did. <laughs> um, so maybe in that light, it worked. Did I fail? And that I, as time went on, especially toward the end of it, I got to a point where I was failing classes and I was in that position. Like I said, I looked at the syllabus, I looked at the points I had, and I looked at how much was remaining, how many points were remaining. I was trying to convince myself I could get 100% of those points. And the problem is I knew that I probably could. See, the, my, my, here's the thing. I'm not taking responsibility. I'm not saying that, you know, people set me up to fail. What I'm saying is I had so many bad habits of waiting to the last minute of other people saying, oh, it's so hard, and, and claiming they were spending all this time studying, and me being like, ah, I looked at it for 20 minutes. Oh, I got a top grade. I did that for so long that I convinced myself it was enough. And then I was always so focused on the next thing. I was not focused on this thing, like this class, because this class is just a means to an end. And I'm already focused on, you know, this whole this thing. I'm graduating anyway, and I'm already focused on my next grad program. And that's what I'm focused on. So I get to the point where I'm looking at a syllabus and, you know, I've not turned things in. Usually that wouldn't be the problem. Usually the problem would be I didn't attend the class. Because remember, this is this is a while ago before the Internet. Um, There's only 24 hours in a day. So, you know, this to scheduling I couldn't even be in all the places I was supposed to be <laughs> um because it wasn't even feasible you know but I never intended to go to all those classes I intended to set, take all the you know set sign, sign up for everything and then take all the tests because in my mind I'd look at the syllabus at the beginning and say okay one of the mandatory must be their days those are the days for the test I'll be there for the test that I can cram I'll be there I'll get my points now if I'm gonna I'm not gonna show up for all the other stuff you know additional lectures additional labs so I start losing points for you know not not attending you know, if there's participation or whatever, I'm losing these points. Um, and then I'm thinking, well, I'll pull it together. I'll do an all-nighter. I'll hit the test and I'll get the, the enough points. And the problem was that worked a lot. Many, many, many times I could do that and, and get, you know, the B um, in a few instances, the C that I was willing to talk myself into was good enough because I was already, you know, applied to, already had been accepted to, you know, my next grad program. So I didn't even really, at that point, I was like, doesn't even matter what these grades are. Um it was wrong on every level. What do I mean by wrong? Um, it was wrong to that to the faculty because they're teaching something that's important and interesting to them. And if I didn't, if it was a means to an end, I shouldn't have treated it as it was so unimportant. Um, it was wrong for me because I love knowledge and I was cheating myself because I was just rushing, rushing, rushing. Um, it happened because I put too much on my plate. And the problem was for so long I did that and it worked, you know, but I'd pull it off, right? It'd be stressful, right? I'd sleep for, you know, however many days, but it would work, meaning I would get whatever the grade is I needed to keep it moving and then, you know, finish that degree and move on to the next one. At some point along the journey, it stopped working, partially because when you each level, it sort of winnows itself out, right? So the reason, you know, it makes sense if somebody it was, you know, so easy in my middle school or my high school, but then I went to school. To, to university where there were you know were pretty high entrance standards, so everybody coming there was 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 the was one of the you know smarter kids in their classes. And then by the time you get to grad school, and it's a really competitive um, law school, really competitive, everybody there was smart. So it, what started to happen is I was around more and more of my similar peers, and my natural kind of advantage that I had played for so long of I can wait till the last minute and pull it together, and it'll be it'll be good enough, it'll be better than than maybe other people who studied a lot longer, it, it dissipated because I, my pool, my peer group that w was around was different. They were very similar to me, and if not better. They were smarter and faster than I was. And so when I failed a class, and I'm trying to think if I ever actually took a, a failure because normally I'm always thinking strategically, right? So I'm withdrawing from a class when I realize I can't pull it together. It's not going to happen. I don't have enough time. Um... um I actually don't think I ever actually had a, had a fail. Maybe. I can't remember. There's a lot of credit hours. But that would have only happened if I was totally out of options. Um, what would usually happen, I'd look at the syllabus and think, oh, okay, I could get all the points, but there's not enough time in the day and I'm exhausted. And I'll just go ahead and either make this pass fail or I'll go into a late withdrawal and pay whatever penalty I have to for, for waiting to the last minute to withdraw from the class. Um, and that that's what I would do. Um, it was my own... It was my own responsibility. I did this to myself. Uh, no one else ha made did this to me. I was not a victim of some mean or um, evil uh, faculty member. No. I did not realistically accept the constraints of the amount of time I had 
and the quality level that I wanted. And the game also changes. By the game, I mean exactly what I said earlier. That it was much easier when when the when the bar was lower, and the work was less you know taxing. Then it was much easier to wait till the last minute for me. As as I progress through these higher and higher levels of of education, which obviously makes sense, you know, moving from your secondary to your undergraduate degree to your you know. I went to a doctoral program, you know, and then to other graduate programs. Um, yeah, of course it got harder. Everybody there was super intelligent and, and, and very talented and ambitious. They could all think like I could think and, and, and quickly on their feet come up with the answers. And so my system broke down. And it taught me a lot of very powerful lessons. In hindsight now, it's weird. I'll look back and think, golly, I was 19? Really? Because I felt so old. Right at the time, I thought like, "Oh, I got to get this done," and I'm so stressed out. And I look back now, or I, I talk to somebody you know now who's 19 or 20, and I think, "Golly, they're so young." But I was so hard on myself. I just felt like I have to get this done. I've got to get this moving. I, you know, there's so much I need to get done. And you know, even in that doctoral program, which is when it really hit, hit the wall for me when I hit law school, which is you know very, it's a, it's a. You know, academically, it's a great program. It's it's one you know one of the top in the United States and you know one of the top in the world. That law school, it's it's um, full of you know literally geniuses in terms of the faculty and many of you know the other students. And so, um, I I was so mad at myself at the time. But the pro- but I look back now with the you know the beauty of of hindsight, and I think, golly, you were hard on yourself at twenty or twenty one. So, yes, did, have I been in situations where, I feel, where I'm failing a class? Yes. Often, if not all the time, did I try to fix it by withdrawing or taking a late penalty or whatever it is and going to some registrar's office and giving some long story and having them, you know, do whatever I need to do so I can make sure I don't have an F or a bad grade? Yes. There may be. I don't know. I'd have to look back. There's a lot of credits. A time where I just was out of energy and it was the end of, the, the, of a program and I said, whatever, just, you know, take the take a failing thing on my transcript it's not even going to matter at this point um very few and far between but this was all so long ago and I really when I look back don't want to be so hard on that you know 17 19 21 22 year old at the time I just thought oh you're so ridiculous why are you know you can do better but I look back and I think that was an intense amount that you put on yourself and you, for, you know, so how did I respond? I went over that. I tried to withdraw, make it pass, fail, do whatever I need to. Of course, I want to keep my great grades as high as I can because I'm always going on to the next program. Solutions I deployed, I just talked about. Um, now, how am I vigilant? I just finished, finished another degree last year, another master's degree. Um, you know, the weird thing is I do love school. And now that I'm in school and I'm older, the rush isn't there as badly. I mean, I still always have the goal, right? Like, I'm going to get to graduation. But I now can relax. I can just take the minimum class and not overload my schedule. I'm not in a rush. You know, I can enjoy it. I can enjoy learning about whatever that that topic is. And and I respect the faculty member. I respect myself. I respect my peer students because I'm interested and I'm not rushed and stressed about just this imaginary time pressure I put on myself. Um, and it's great. And, you know, the benefit, of course, also is since I, I plan, you know, oh, I can only, I only have a little bit of time, so I'm going to take either one class. Maybe I'll take two. Um, now I'm relaxed and my grades are amazing, right? Because I have plenty of time to work on all my assignments and I'm not stressed out. And, um, you know, so I'm weirdly, I mean, you know, I'm, I'm even happier, right? So I get the super high A I wanted and, you know, um, I learned so much and it was fun. And I, you know, and, and there's none of this stuff I did decades ago, the all-nighters and going to, you know, administration offices and crying and I begging, I need, you know, to change, you know, whatever, let me withdraw. It's over. But, the, the issue, the underlying issue of sort of that drive for the goal, why am I like that, that's still here. It's changed because I don't, you know, I already have so many other degrees and I'm already doing other work that it's, I don't, it, you know, I take it more of a luxury and that's why I'm able to, to slow down a bit. But I'm, but I still am just as driven. Um, so I have to remain vigilant. There are only so many hours in a day. I got to pick. I'm not going to be able to do the max. or I, Maybe I might be able to do the minimum. Maybe I have to ask for um, permission to take less than the minimum and move at a little tortoise pace, but that's okay. 
I get to now really enjoy the view. Before I just went everywhere and I couldn't even tell you what I saw because I didn't see anything because I was so busy. I was just moving, moving, moving. Now it's relaxing. I'm enjoying myself along the way. I'm learning. I make good grades. I feel good about myself. You know, work in progress. I hope some of this has been helpful for you as I shared my failure flashback. As always, you can come to CourtneyAnderson.com for more information. Thanks.